Can I retire at 60 with $500,000 saved for retirement and should I take social security benefits early? That's what we're going to look at today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. We're going to go through two specific scenarios, one on the board and one in the EKG software. And I want to go through, can I retire at 60 with $500,000 saved for retirement? I also want to look at claiming social security and why it makes sense in some cases, and it might be your individual situation or your individual retirement, to claim social security early. That's what we're going to look at today. We've got $500,000 in retirement assets. We're retiring at 60 and here are our levels for social security. Now, if we take social security at 62, we're going to have $2,100 and 1750 for a total of 3850 a month in social security benefits. Now, if you claim Social Security at 62, you're going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you wait till 67, as long as you were born after the year 1960, you'll get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you wait till 70, you'll get 124% of your full retirement benefit. And you can see the differences here. 3850 if they take it 62 at 67 their social security would be 3,500 for a total of $5,500 monthly in social security if they were to wait until 67 and at 70 their individual social securities would be 3720 and 3100 for a total of $6,000 $820 in Social Security monthly. So you can see the difference between $3,850 at 62, $5,500 at 67, and $6,820 at 70. But in their case, does it make sense to take Social Security early? And let me talk to you about why it might make sense for them. Well, first, many people take Social Security early for three specific reasons. The first reason is they can't work anymore. They're either disabled, they can't find a job, or they just are tired of working. And so instead of finding a part-time job, they just start taking Social Security early. Nothing wrong with that. But that's really the main reason why people take Social Security early. And if you look at statistics, many people take Social Security early. That's just the average of how it works. Normally, you take Social Security as soon as you quit working. You don't wait till 67 or 70. And many people do that. The second reason why most people take Social Security early is life expectancy. They don't believe they're going to live long enough to claim enough benefits, so they take it right away. Again, nothing wrong with that thinking. We want to make sure it's individualized for you. But again, nothing wrong with that. And the third reason is many people think Social Security is going insolvent, so they say, give me my money now. And so they take Social Security early so that if Social Security ever does have a reduced benefit, not insolvency, but has a reduced benefit, they've collected what they've paid in for as long as they possibly can. So those are the three reasons why people collect it early. Now, as a financial advisor, I look at it and say, Let's think about it from a tax standpoint. Let's think about it from a financial planning standpoint. Does it make sense for this individual or this family actually to take Social Security early? Let's look at it from a tax standpoint first. So I've got four ages on the board here. I've got age 62, age 67, age 70, and age 73. This is your first time, age 62 is when you can first start to claim Social Security. So this is our starting date for when we can claim Social Security. 67 is our full retirement age, so that's our full retirement benefit age. And 70 is when we get an extended, we've extended our credits and we get that 124% benefit. And age 73 is when RMDs start. Now they are gonna be extended after the year 2033 to age 75, but for this video, we're just gonna say 73 is when RMDs are gonna start. That's your required minimum distribution. A required minimum distribution is a rule the IRS says if you have IRAs, 401Ks, 403Bs, TSPs, anything that is tax deferred, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs, that you must start taking out a percentage of that at age 73 and do it every year thereafter until your demise, you must take out that percentage. That percentage goes up. You pay taxes on that money. And so what we're looking at here is 
When does it make the most sense to claim Social Security? What's that going to do to our taxes? And how can we keep our taxes low longer? Because eventually this day is going to hit here. So what can we do to help eliminate the taxes within our RMDs, but also claim Social Security at the appropriate age? Now, let's talk about how Social Security is taxed for a minute. So Social Security is taxed by a formula called provisional income. It's basically your retirement income plus interest plus half of your Social Security benefits. That equals your provisional income. That's how you're taxed on Social Security. So it looks like this. So provisional income is any kind of distributions from your IRA. So let's just say IRAs, 401ks, anything that's ordinary income plus interest plus 50% of your social security benefit plus any tax-free interest like municipal bonds and that will equal how your social security is taxed your provisional income so let's do the formula for this couple first at 3850 now we've got to find out what are their expenses so 3850 times 12 equals what does that equal? 46200 So at 62, they're going to get $46,200 from Social Security. Let's assume that their expenses are $50,000. The average person in retirement, the average family in retirement has $55,000 in expenses. We'll go to 50 just to say, let's cut off $5,000. So they need... 50,000 minus 46,200 to live off plus Social Security. So they need about what, $3,800 a year extra on top of their Social Security. Now, they can either do one of two things. They can take Social Security at 62, get $46,000, take $4,000 out of their IRA and do that with inflation, or they can delay their Social Security to another age take $50,000 plus taxes on top of that, right? If you need $50,000 out of your IRA, you're gonna have to take out 55 or 5,700 because of state and federal taxes. And so what's gonna make the most sense? Delay Social Security, get a bigger benefit there, pay some taxes up front to lower the RMDs, or take Social Security early, delay this, have a bigger RMD. Those are the big questions. I know that you're thinking about this because this is what keeps me up at night. This is what I think about all the time. So for them, we decided to take Social Security early and I'll show you why. Because both decisions aren't wrong. You could take Social Security early and you could delay your IRA or you could take money out of your IRA and delay Social Security. It, it's up to you. But here's the reason why we chose it for them and I'll show you it to you in the software as well. So for them, from a tax standpoint, we've got to take out $3,800 from their IRA. So $3,800, that's on top of Social Security, right? So they need $3,800 out of their IRA plus Social Security for their living expenses. You might be saying, Drew, why aren't you taking taxes out of that? I'm going to show you why I'm not taking taxes out of that because they ain't going to have any taxes on it. <laughs> plus that $4,620 or 46,200, that gives us our 50K that we need to live off of. Okay, so let me show you what the taxes look like. So we need to do the provisional income calculator first. So we take our IRA income, which is $3,800. We add that to half of our social security benefit. So their social security benefit is 46,200. All we're gonna do is divide that by two, which is 23,100. Okay, that's going to give us our provisional income. So what is that quick math? 23, 100 plus 38. Let's just do it like this. Let's do old school math. My kids are homeschooled, so this is how I have to do it with them. 26,900. So that's their taxable income. You understand? We're trying to figure out what makes the most tax sense. So there's the money they pulled out of their IRA. There's half of their Social Security benefits, so there's the income that goes on their tax return, okay? Now, they're married filing jointly. The current tax code has a standard deduction of $27,700. So they're not going to pay any taxes. If you take out the standard deduction with the taxable income, they have no taxes. So that's why 
For them, it made the most sense to take Social Security early because all the money we're going to pull out of the IRA over the next however many years until we get to 73 is not going to have any taxes taken out of it. If we started taking it out right away from the IRA and we delayed Social Security, we're going to take out more taxes on top of that. And so for them, it made the most sense to take Social Security early because we're not going to pay any taxes on that money. Are you following me? Now, let's act like this is the Trump tax code right now, okay? The year 2023. In the year 2026, taxes are going to change. They're going to revert back to the Obama era tax code. So what happens to the standard deduction? The standard deduction basically goes to half. So let's take the 26,900. That's our provisional income. Let's take this down to 12,000. Okay, so 12,000 is just a guess at what the standard deduction will be married filing jointly in the future. Okay, that's what it was in 2012 before the, the Trump tax code changed. So 26,9 minus 12,000 means our taxable income now is what? 14,900. So we're still going to be in a very, very low tax bracket. If we throw that into the 10% tax bracket, it's $1,400. And that's not including any credits or anything else going on our tax, tax return, which is probably going to take this to zero. So even with taxes going up and a new tax bracket, for them, it makes the most sense to take Social Security early. So asking the question, can I retire at 60 with $500,000? Should I take Social Security? Yeah, you should take it early in this case. Now, let's go to the software and I'll show you, can they retire? All right, can I retire at 60 with $500,000 saved for retirement and should I claim Social Security early? That's what we're going to look at. We're going to dive into the software and I'm going to show you why this couple should claim Social Security at 62, not delaying their Social Security and I'll go through the different reasons why that is. Are you ready for that? Because I know I just said something that you don't hear a lot of financial advisors talk about, and that's claiming Social Security early. All right, so here's what we got. We've got Drew and Valerie. Obviously, that's me and my wife. The names have been changed on this couple to protect the innocent. Now, they are both 60 years old. They do live in Florida, so they have a low state and local tax, but they still have federal taxes, so that's something we do need to look at. And they're both retired. So, we're already in retirement. Now, they came to me after they retired and said, hey, when should we claim Social Security and are we going to be okay? Now, I was doing a full financial EKG for these individuals. Would have loved for them to come to me before they retired and ask those questions, but it's okay that they came to me afterwards. Hey, we're going to work wherever you are at. And if you want a financial EKG, in the description below is a link to get in touch with us and we can go through a retirement plan for you that's individualized because you can get a retirement plan anywhere. You can get a free plan at Vanguard. You can get a free plan at uh, Fidelity but you can only get a your financial EKG with me. All right, so here we go. So social security benefits. Now for Drew at 62, it's 1,750. For Valerie at 62, it's 2,100. Now she was the primary breadwinner for most of their lives. So let me show you the social security differences here. So for her, her full retirement age is 67 because she was born after the year 1960. The benefit at 67 would be $3,000. For him, it would be $2,500. And you can see how there's a difference and how they grow as we wait. So at 63 for her, it's 2250, 2400, 2600, 2800, 3000. And if you delay even longer, 3240, 3480, and 3720. Now that all looks fine and dandy, but we've got to get to these ages first. And we have to think about where's the income going to come from if we delay Social Security and what are the taxes going to be like on those assets? So for them, they have traditional IRAs, two of them plus the bank. And so if they're going to delay Social Security, all of their income is going to come from their IRAs. So does it make sense to delay Social Security and start taking money out of their IRA early? pay the taxes now. There's no penalty, but pay those taxes now to delay Social Security or 
Do we delay Social Security now, defer the IRAs, allow those IRAs to continue to grow? What I would like to see is when we get to our mid-70s, our mid-80s, that we still have a nest egg there. We haven't drained it all. And so you've got to look at this on an individualistic approach because when we get to our 70s and 80s, there's going to be long-term care. There's going to be things that we're going to need money for. So if we drain all our assets first, have a larger Social Security benefit, what are we going to do if we have an emergency? So let's talk about that. Let's look at that. So we're going to look at taking Social Security at 62. Now there's no pension benefits. And if you look at assets, you can see they basically have three different assets. Drew has an IRA for $150,000. Valerie has an IRA of three hundred fifty, dollars And they have a bank account of $15,000. Okay, so they've got $515,000 in total retirement assets. This is our emergency fund, this $15,000. So we're not really counting that in their retirement savings. We're only counting these two IRAs. They're not making any contributions because they're not working. They are retired. They do have a home that is paid for for $400,000. So we've got about $900,000 in total net worth of which $500,000 is being used for retirement income, $15,000 is an emergency fund, and $400,000 is a protected asset. It's a physical asset that we could do a reverse mortgage down the road. We could sell it you know, rent, whatever. So it's, it's, it's there. It's not necessarily something we want to do, but it's there if we need to. All right. Now, from a rate of return standpoint, we're going to look at a 6% rate of return on all assets. Oops, missed 6% there. And I can show you if we take it down to 5% and 4%, we might get the end of that in this video. We might not, depending on the length of the video. But what I really want to concentrate on today is Social Security. Now, from an expense standpoint, their expenses are $5,000 per month, and we're going to look at a 3% inflation rate. Okay, so that's $60,000 a year that they need off of their retirement investments or a combination of social security and retirement investments. Again, we're talking about taxes and what makes the most sense. So let's go to taxes. So we're going to take social security early. So we need to go to that year. I want to show you something. So this is the year 2023. They are 60. We're not taking social security yet. So at 60, they've got to take out $50,559 from their assets to pay for everything they need to do, right? And we're looking at this kind of mid-year, so that's why it's 50,000, not the 60, okay? So it's March. So if we take out the standard deduction of 27.7, that means our taxable income, or our tax is 2,318. That means we're in the 4.57% projected federal tax rates. It's really low, it's, it's really, really good. Now let's go to 2024, let's go for a whole year of income. So here we go, 64649 Now you might think, what's the extra income? That's inflation and taxes, okay? Remember their expenses are $5,000 a month with inflation. So we've got 64649 came out of our retirement investments that we're hopefully earning 6% a year on. That's what we're projecting. We have a standard deduction of 27.7. That means taxable income is 37 1,101, so we have our base, base tax, over base, over base, so our federal tax is $4,000, which now puts us at the 6.19. So we've gone two years of taking out $50,000 and $60,000. Now we're gonna go into our third year, and now we're gonna start taking Social Security. What's that gonna do to our taxes? So let's go to 2025. Now look at this. Here's our taxable Social Security, 7,073. You might be thinking, Drew, why is it only 7,000 taxable? It's because we're using provisional income. Provisional income is taking your investment income, like your IRAs, ordinary income, plus interest, plus half of your Social Security, plus any tax-free interest, that gives you provisional income, and that determines how much of your Social Security is taxable. Well, for them, their provisional income is only causing 7,000 dollars of their social security be taxed. Now they're taking all of their social security, which we did it on the board, so all of their social security is 46,200 at 62. But only $7,000 of that 46,200 is being calculated into their taxes. And so we have some taxable withdrawals here. This is just because of inflation and taxes. Here's our standard deduction of 27,700. Now our 
total tax is $154, which puts us in the 0.53% tax bracket. So we were already in a really low tax bracket, but now we're in the 0.53 tax bracket. You following me? Let's go to 2026. But now we're in a zero tax bracket. Look at that, zero. Now, why are we in a zero tax bracket? Because we've had social security for the whole year. Now in the last scenario, or I'm sorry, in the last year in 2025, their social security didn't kick on for a couple, couple months. But now we've had a whole year of social security. So again, our taxable social security is 5,373. Our money that we need out of our investments is 18,898 for extra income with inflation and taxes. Standard deduction, look at those zeros. So from the year 2026, so from age 63 to age 73, they're pretty much going to be at zero under the current tax code. Now we all know that taxes are going to change in 2027. So let's go to 2027 and let's adjust taxes. So the year 2027, let's do a 25% increase on taxes. We'll save that. So now we've adjusted taxes by 25% for the year 2027. That's back to the Obama era taxes. Because that's what will happen. If the Trump tax code is not extended or, or refined or they change it, it reverts back to the Obama era. All right, so now let's look at can I retire, right? We've retired at 60. How long is our money going to last? Because that's really the question we need to know. Are we going to delay Social Security? Are we going to take it early? How long is our money going to last? Now, in their case, here, let's look at this. So we're at age 60. We have no pension and no Social Security. Remember, we're, we're, we're going to take it early but we don't have anything else between those early years. So our assets go from 515 down to 455 because we're having to use that for retirement income. But then at age 62, our social security kicks on, which means our expenses at 5,423 subtracted from our social security means we only need $1,500 a month. Now that does increase with inflation and eventually at 92, we're out of spendable assets, but we do have this house. So it's not a bad scenario, right? We could reverse mortgage the house, we could sell it. So taking Social Security early for them made the most sense tax-wise, and it got them into their early 90s, retiring at 60 with $500,000. Now, let's go back, because I hear a lot of you talking about it. Should they delay Social Security? Let's look at it. Let's go back to the calculator. Let's put them at 67. Save that. And let's just look at it. Let's go to taxes. Let's change the brackets back down. Oh, we're going to increase in 2027, so let's keep that. So let's go to 2024. That's a full year. So this is not going to change. There's 6.19. 2025, 6.49. So we're paying taxes. Remember at age 62, we weren't paying any taxes. Taking Social Security early. Here, we're still paying taxes. Now, it's just a little bit. $4,000 here, $4,000 there. Here's our increase, 8.55. Now we're paying about $6,200. But let's go to retirement and see what that does. Oh, wow, look at this. Now we're going to delay Social Security to 67, but look what it does. We're out of money at 86. Remember, at 62, we were out at 92. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. Now, how long did we delay Social Security? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. By delaying Social Security seven years, we ran out of income seven years earlier than we did claiming Social Security at 62. Now, does this work for everybody? Is this your situation? Should you run out and claim Social Security at 62? I don't know. You need to contact me. We need to do a Social Security optimization schedule. We need to do a retirement EKG. We need to do a financial EKG to make sure you can get to retirement, through retirement, protect your ability to stay in retirement. 
but I wanted to show you why for them it made sense to collect early, to save on taxes, to look, use that retirement income for those first two years, take that Social Security. I'm not worried about RMDs as much because again, showing it in the software with increased taxes, they're out at 92 years old. So if the tax code stays where it's at or increases, they're gonna be okay. And so it just want you when you're running your financial EKG, it has to be based on you. All right? Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.